meet again Don't know where, don't know when But I know we'll meet again some sunny day <coughs> Oh, hey everybody, JT Vector Sigma here And we have a lot to unpack with this review That's why I've gone with a post-perspective video Instead of a 60 Seconds of Steven video and also, be warned, there will be a ton of spoilers in this. I am not being spoiler-free at all. So, you should definitely go watch the episode before watching this, as well as, you know, my reaction as well. Um, so yeah. <laughs> this is the finale of Steven Universe Season 5, Change Your Mind. So, I'd like to start out this review with some simple gushing. This was... An amazing episode. I say that almost every time, but it's especially true here. This was action-packed. There was so much fan service, and it was freaking emotional as all hell. Everything got wrapped up here, more or less. And this really does just feel like an ending to the show. But there's a movie that's definitely confirmed, and I've heard a season six is coming, maybe, possibly... The official word is that this is the end of this version of the show, which implies that there's going to be another version, but what that version will be, what they actually mean, who knows? It could just mean that there's going to be a sequel show or a spin-off show. Who know? We really have no idea. But whatever it is going to be, I trust the crew universe to do an amazing job. The only real question that I still have after the end of this finale is, who made White Diamond? Obviously, she made the other diamonds, and they all made the smaller gems, but White Diamond says stuff like she can't have a flaw, and she's supposed to be perfect. Who told her those things? I mean, it's it's just hard to believe that she came up with it herself, or that the diamonds, or at least White Diamond, was the product of natural evolution. So, it, it makes more sense that there is a... Uh, 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 an organic species that created the gems and we just haven't met them yet. And before we get into anything more specific about this, I want to talk about some larger issue things. I'd like to talk for a moment about the entire arc, this Diamond Days or Battle of Heart and Mind, whatever it's called. This was a fantastic arc. It has a great three-act structure to it. it. It really feels like a complete story, unlike a lot of previous groups, which had one episode stand way apart, like Rose's Scabbard from the first Steven Bomb, or Rising Tides Crashing Skies from the second. And then the Sardonyx arc had historical friction, and then, you know, uh, for the season two finale group, you had the answer, because that one had no paradox in it at all. Hit the Diamond from the Season 3 premiere group. Line for the alternate ending from the Season 4 finale group. Yeah, it, it, there's a kind of a pattern there that thankfully is definitively broken at this point. Where the entire arc is all one story. No outliers. Even escapism was not really that much of an outlier. Because uh, it, it kind of seems like a metaphor for the entire uh, Diamond versus crystal gem art thing and as well as you know connecting back to the main story at the end and starting there so yeah it, it's it's got its own little story in there but it overall is very connected to the rest of it uh and as for like the results of the arc i truly believe that the diamonds have changed i've always believed that they deserved that chance and i think they have even White, her battling there at the end, uh, kind of convinced me that she was just as brainwashed as Yellow and Blue were, which, again, the question there is, like, is is that a result of self-delusion? Which I don't really believe it would be. Or is there a grander scale enemy, some race that created the gems that they're now going to have to deal with? Overall, I do wish that Peridot and Lapis had a bit more to do in this arc, but mostly I'm just happy that they're there. And Lars's return does feel slightly tacked on, but it works well enough, I suppose. Overall, this entire arc is just one moment of awesome after another. It's so good. And season five in general, well, let's talk about that. It's been amazing. 
It started as a direct continuation of the season 4 finale, but it never really paused after that. Everything just keeps happening in one one small story after another that all just contributes to the bigger story. It does feel a little bit sped up compared to the previous seasons. There's no real filler episodes, but even then, you know, we know that Steven Universe doesn't have any true filler episodes. But there are no episodes in season five that feel like they're only going to be relevant later on. It's everything in this season is all about what was happening right and then. And there is a question of, is that all according to plan from the current universe or was Cartoon Network screwing the show over again? So they had to speed it up. I don't know. Ultimately, it doesn't even really matter because this, this is the payoff season. This is our reward for going through all of the other stuff. We get this, this season, this finale, this arc. It's all a reward for us in the audience who love this show, and I love it. I mean, just thinking about the show in general, like, the show is definitively different at this ending point from where it was at the start. Like, just going through the characters here, Steven is now a leader. He started out as the least powerful, least useful of the Crystal Gems, and now he is their leader. He is the one that they turn to. He is above all of them. He calls the shots now, which is pretty incredible. I mean, Garnet has gone from being the head of the team, the leader, to being now the heart of the team. They can't, they can't function without her, but it's because she's the one who inspires them, that convinces them that there's something worth fighting for. And that's really incredible. I mean, Pearl has healed her emotional wounds, she's gained independence, she's her own gem now, and that's beautiful. Amethyst is no longer depressed, she's become the most mature gem and all that stuff. And then, I mean, from this one, the diamonds, they're not they're gonna at least try not to be tyrants anymore, which is pretty awesome. They there's now a peace between Earth and Homeworld, and the corruption is cured, so cured, so that's all pretty great. Lapis, she's no longer really seems all that depressed, and Peridot's gone over fully to the Crystal Gems. Bismuth has come around and not gonna be a jerk anymore. <laughs> and uh, even the other humans, you know, Nanafwa is the mayor now, William Dewey is running the Big Donut, Sadie and the cool kids, they're now all rock stars, Lars is an undead space pirate, and he's also no longer depressed and full of self-loathing. And Connie, you know, like, there's one of the biggest ones. She's gone from a meek little bookworm to being, in trope terms, a boisterous genius bruiser. Like, holy shit. She was going to take on White Diamond, the entire mecha, with her tiny-ass little sword, and she actually thought she could win. I bet she would have found a way to win. Even if Obsidian was not there, I bet Connie would have found a way to win. I mean, she did get disarmed later, but that was only mostly because she was worried about Steven. She got distracted. Um, and, you know, there were there are the other townsfolk, the ones that I'm not going to really go through. They're a little bit lesser, but, like, Steven has helped pretty much everybody in town overcome their issues. So, the entire setting has changed, pretty much. Okay. Now that that's all out of the way, let's talk some more specific stuff. So, the Diamond's treatment of Pink has always been compared to an abusive family. Like, I think the oldest hint from that has to be back in Jungle Moon. Um, but it's been very obvious since the reveal that they are. They're an abusive family. And that definitely reaches its climax in this finale, in Change Your Mind. Um, with her being locked in a closet and crying. And then Blue comes in, and she's just like, Oh, you're worse than ever! As if there's a standard that she has to live up to beyond just being herself and not, you know, being an absolute awful person. Like, like if you hold your child to anything more than, uh, don't be a complete psychopath, murderous, whatever, I mean, or I suppose, you know, you can add in there, don't be, like, have a don't be like anti some group you know don't don't be homophobic or racist or anything like that like 
aside from that very baseline stuff of be a decent human being, if you hold your child to any standard other than that, there is something wrong with you. And then, of course, when when Pink, you know, Steven, tries to stand up for himself, you know, Blue physically attacked him. Like, that's just... Yeah. Like, that. that's... Like, just imagine, you know, you're, you dare to say no to your parents even once, and they just smack you across the face. Like, yeah, that's just wrong. And Blue's realization of that what she was doing was wrong, that was just such a beautiful and powerful moment. I, I really loved seeing that. Uh, just the way that she fell apart, pretty much. I mean, Yellow is kind of right later on. They're... They're brittle, in a way. And then, speaking of yelling, you know, confronting her, the other big scene right there, I mean, that one has a lot of layers to it. Like, there's the obvious, you know, transgender metaphor uh, when Blue says she prefers to be called Steven. I mean, she Blue hasn't quite got the pronouns done right, but it's, a, it's very obvious, and it's a good start for her, for Blue moving forward. And uh, then, like, right after that, there's a, a like a metaphor for society uh, uh, um, in general when Yellow's like, well, if we bend the rules for her, we'll have to bend the rules for everybody. And Connie's just like, well, maybe you should. <laughs> like, go, Connie. And also, yeah. Like, that's that's like one of the big things is that a lot of people are like, well, we can't just bend the rules for certain people because then we'd have to bend them for everyone. It's like, yeah, that's kind of the point, you know. Like, just... Making blanket laws is so short-sighted and just so inadequate for actually governing society. You have to leave, not loopholes, but you have to leave gaps that are for situations that you cannot expect. Things might arise that you can't foresee, and that's why we have the courts. It's not just to determine, oh, well, that law shouldn't exist. It should be to de- to determine that, okay, this situation that the law didn't cover, here's how you're going to handle it in the future. So, that's that's a thing. And then, of course, you know, the fight between Yellow and Blue, that was just awesome. But just as amazing as the fight is Steven, uh, you know, standing up to Yellow and being like, hey, you know, what you're doing here, this is not perfection. And... You know, when Yellow finally just lets go and allows herself to cry and lean on Blue the way that Blue's been leaning on her so much, that, that might be, I think that's in my top moments of the actual episode. Like, is it here? Mm, it is. It, it is. It's not, it's not as high. I might, I might change that around here. But yeah, that was just a great moment. And it, it really reminds me of the movie Inside Out. Um, cause a big lesson in that movie was that sometimes it's necessary to be sad. You have to let yourself experience the sadness and the negativity and all that in a healing way. You have to, sometimes you just have to cry it out and suppressing that is not healthy for you. And yellow was suppressing it. (laughs) Yellow and blue, you know, I mean, even their colors, they're a lot like joy and sadness from that movie. Which is really cool. Um, But White Diamond, of course, is nothing like Riley's parents in that movie. Uh, And once White Pearl appears in this finale, the next pretty much 15 minutes or so, mostly just action. And just so many cool moments. I mean, we get the fusions. You know, we get Smoky Quartz reappearing, which is, that's just fun. Um, and then Rainbow Quartz 2.0. I love I love them. I, I don't know what the pronouns are for that one. I've seen they, them. I've seen he, he and him. I, I don't know. It, it, it's a very masculine design, but not too masculine. Like, it could be more feminine or it could just be non completely non-binary. I don't know. I'm going to use they, them. For, mo- for pretty much all the fusions that include Steven, just because it's easier, but whatever. Um, and Rainbow 2.0 uh, does remind me of someone, like a specific someone, either an actor or a character, and I'm not 
really sure who. I've been just trying to figure it out, and I just, I can't. I, it might be like one of the Doctor Who, like one of the doctors from Doctor Who, but I, I, I don't know. And then, and then there's Sunstone. Um, I'm still not completely sold on Sunstone. I've rewatched the this whole thing a couple of times, and yeah, it just every time it, it's like I think I'm gonna like it, and then it's just like no, just no, like. Their suction cup glove thingies are weird, and their like the attitude is nice, but like the things that Sunstone is saying are just too cliche. It's just no, like even the fourth wall breaky stuff, I don't mind too much. It's just what she says. It's too cheesy and too too much, and I just I feel uncomfortable. But then we get Obsidian, who is just. Wow, like, they are the best example of awesome incarnate since Tang and Tabo Gurren Lagann. And I have watched that show, and I should probably make specific redirects for the reactions to that, even though they're old reactions and not really all that great compared to what my current standard is. I mean, I think people would probably want to see that, so I might do that. Uh, But Obsidian pulling out her sword has to be in the top five most anime moments of the show. So, <laughs> yeah, that's just... Wow. I, I love it. And then, of course, you know, we got the, the secondary ones returning. Bismuth and Peridot and Lapis, and that's just great. Peridot's new outfit, you know, she's got the stars everywhere. Kamina's glasses. And, you know, Lapis in her sweatpants and crop top, she's just adorable. And, uh, you know, new outfits, like, all the Crystal Gems reform, so Pearl gets a jacket, like, like the, kind of like the one she wore in, uh, Last One Out of Beach City, that's great. Amethyst with, I guess they're jorts, jean shorts, and a t-shirt with the black cutout, she, she looks comfy, I like it. Garnets is also a little bit weird, uh, like Sunstone, (laughs) but it's totally anime, and I just, I get the feeling that if her and Paradox did ever fuse... They'd look like Super Galaxy Gurren Lagann, the, the, like the third or the second biggest mech, I think, in the entire series, which would be awesome. <sighs> and then, you know, on top of all of that, we've got the assembling of the full diamond mecha that people have been like, oh, that's, that's gonna, that's a thing. And it's just like, yep, yes it is, it looks awesome. It's, I mean, kind of creepy also with the eyes, but just in general, it's a lot of fun and really cool. Yeah, uh, a lot of the non-action bits in that segment of time are pretty fun, too. I mean, seeing blue and yellow open up to white, that could not have been easy. Um, Actually, I kind of know it wouldn't be easy. Um, And, like, yellow's just admitting to weakness, which is completely... Like, that's something she would never do without any kind of coaching. And also, blue openly expressing a desire to do something outside of her purpose that's it's all just fantastic uh but then white diamond you know just enslaves them (laughs) which is scary uh the the entire confrontation in white's head is just heart pounding i mean this show has had a lot of creepy and scary things but white controlling all of the gems is top tier definitely i mean without even looking into the dialogue just the way she makes them move is creepy but the actual dialogue itself is also just really messed up white doesn't even have to move to make steven and us feel like we're absolutely nothing she seems completely omniscient and omnipotent and she she just verbally breaks down the gems under her control it's it's terrifying on an existential level. I mean, their character development that we've seen should refute what she says, but somehow it doesn't. And I think one of the worst things of all is just the way that she completely undermines Steven's sense of self, because it's it's always kind of been a question, like, is Steven actually Steven, or is he just another form of Rose Quartz Pink Diamond? I mean, we get the answer here, and it's, it's actually kind of awesome but also kind of weird like pink steven is weird i mean it's not even clear like were those 
like two completely separate entities temporarily or was one consciousness controlling both of them like maybe pink was like acting on steven's subconscious stuff i i don't know it's weird um but either way it does confirm that steven is a completely new person he is not pink he is not rose he he has his own soul which might make this the first time, chronologically speaking, that a gem has truly died. Because, like, even Shattered Gems retain some level of consciousness, we've seen that. And Steven can unlock some of Pink's memories, but only through dreams. And I also saw a very good thing that, um... Uh, basically point out that Steven only does that, uh, in, when he's in places that Pink has cried... Uh, which seems to support his uh, saying that, you know, he's connecting with her emotions, not really her memories. And also just every time that he does dream about her, it's corrupted or incomplete in some way, which is pretty great. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Pink Steven just completely undermines White Diamond. Like, he, he for, for, for one thing, like, he completely proves that White is not omniscient because she didn't see... Like, she thought that that was Pink Diamond there. She didn't see Steven being himself, and, like, she was she was just completely wrong. And if she was wrong about Pink, you know, what else or who else is she wrong about? I mean, and there's also the fact that, like, neither him nor the human half are, like, Pink Steven and the human half are, com- when they're separated, they're not complete. Like, they're, they're, you can see that they're lacking something. So, like, neither species is technically inferior to the other, like White was saying, like, because they can't, the two halves cannot survive, like, without each other in a, and be, be a complete entity without each other. The humans cannot be inferior to the gems, therefore, and the gems cannot be superior to the humans. And, I mean, even beyond that, you know, just, he's someone that White Diamond cannot control, which is pretty crazy to think about. And just seeing all of that, it, it forces White to think differently. Forces her to, you know, question everything that she knows. And when she does so, you know, she realizes, you know, she's just as flawed as all the other gems. And she can't deny that anymore. Especially once Yellow and Blue actually see, so, see that she's flawed as other gems are. So, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Uh, and then, finally, you know, they all return to Earth. And that's probably the part where it feels the most rushed. We don't get a lot of time with the reformed diamonds. There's there's just a lot of things there in that ending of the finale that could have... You could have formed a whole episode out of a lot of these premises. You know, uh, Lars and Sadie reuniting and being awkward with each other, the diamonds in the off colors interacting with each other, figuring out what's the best way to cure the corruption, and what do the corrupted gems do or think after being uncorrupted and you know missing out on the last six thousand years or so or whatever. Uh, Jasper's apparent reformation, uh, going over the side of good, and you know everyone who hasn't been told about Rose being pink, you know, finding out and reacting to that. Uh, just all of that pretty much gets glossed over with a musical montage, which I feel like a lot of people are going to say that's a bad thing. I don't necessarily think so. Because while it would be cool to see episodes based around all of these things and, you know, get more time with these characters and seeing all that stuff and whatnot, that's all resolution at this point. Like, if, it, if we do get another season, we could explore some of those concepts more, and that would be fine because, you know, we got a new season, we're building towards something new, we gotta have, we're probably gonna have some fluff pieces of exploring characterization and whatnot, but for right now, all of that is, yeah, it's resolution. The main conflict has been resolved, so we kinda, you have to wrap things up like that. If it were dragged out, it wouldn't feel right and there's also just a lot of small things happening in that montage that are hard to spot and so when you do go back and rewatch it it's it's really cool because you get to be like oh hey i didn't notice that the first time and i always enjoy stuff like that so 
Yeah, it, it gets a pass from me. <sighs> wow. Um, okay. I th- we're drawing to a close here, and uh, but before we go, I, I, I would like to list off my top five moments of the finale. Number five. Yellow's crying breakdown. When when she's on the bridge there and Steven finally gets through to her and she realizes that this isn't Blue's fault, Blue isn't using her powers, everything is not perfect, she's not perfect, and she just allows herself to feel, that is just amazing and I love it and I love the comparisons to Inside Out and I... Because ah, Yellow was always, like, she was so militaristic and like overtly seemingly bad that like compared to the more subtleness of white diamond like she white ye, bleh words yellow always seemed like she would be very hard to convince and steven finally does it and it's amazing <sighs> number four white diamond and all of her enslaved gems blasting pink steven with all of their energy it's just an amazing moment and very anime just the way that they all kind of rear up and you know eyes glowing and looking completely evil and then they just blast all at once it's very cool very cool and then uh number three steven finally getting through to blue at the very beginning that was Wow, just so cathartic. Blue was always going to be the easiest, but seeing her struggle and resist through the last few episodes and just seeming, just just everything about it, like, I have a feeling if I go back and rewatch those other episodes, you know, it would, it, it would seem very different, um, the way that Blue's acting. Just, like, she'd probably... I'd probably be able to see a lot of fear in her going back there. Like, fear for Steven, fear um, for herself uh, of White Diamond and her wrath. Like, just, I don't know. It's, it's such a beautiful moment, and it means so much. There's a lot of layers to it, and I just, ah, uh, gets the feels every time. Number two, Obsidian creating her sword, or their sword. That's just... Way too cool. Like, it has... This show has no right to have anything that cool in it. That's that's the view I have. And the fact that it is here is just icing on the cake. And I feel like cheering so much. <sighs> Every time. <sighs> and finally, number one, of course, the reunion on Earth. Because everything about that is just so sweet. Lars and Sadie getting together back there. But, like meeting up and just, you know, seeing each other again and just talking and just being awkward like that. It's so cute. And Steven running over and hugging his dad and just everybody cheering on Steven and the off-colors finally getting to Earth, the diamonds finally getting to Earth, and just even White. White Diamond has no... White Diamond has no right to be as adorable as she is at the end. But she is. And... I can't help but smile because of it. (sighs) So, this is the end, then, of my review. I don't really have much else to say. This was a fantastic episode, a great finale to a great season, and the conclusion to this iteration of what is my current favorite cartoon. I, I can't even think objectively about this enough to give it a rating, it, it it breaks every system I have. Like I want to give it like a plus 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 or one hundred and fifty thousand percent or you know twenty out of ten something like that because I just enjoy it so much. There's fan service. There's actual plot. There's just so much cool stuff. So much emotional stuff. It has everything. So. All that I can say is that I love this finale, and I can't wait to watch it again. 